Hey guys, Dana Alexander here from Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Groomer. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you some of my tips for faster grooming on your kennel cuts. Uh, sim I do do similar tips on my teddy bears and breed cuts as well, but today I'm going to show you a short kennel cut on a very, very thick coated Cocker Spaniel. I know lots of us struggle with this breed. Um, this guy gets a very short haircut, um, just a one length all over strip. That's what his owner loves. Uh, she actually brings him in in pretty decent shape, although his hair is super, super thick like this guy. Super thick. And of course, like many Cocker Spaniels, he can't be total. He doesn't do well with the four stars. So we actually hand dry this guy completely. So I'm going to explain to you my tips on how to groom these guys faster and more efficiently. This guy knows to tail um, even with the bath and blow dries around a a one hour 15 minute groom for me so one hour 15 minutes that's bath blow dry and clippering so the clippering part the entire clippering part nose to tail is uh, 20 minutes for me and I'm gonna show you how that's possible um, with uh, with using your clippers in innovative ways um, so we're gonna do that right away I've done half the dog so we're gonna set our timer and start at 10 minutes for the other half and uh, we're gonna start going at that. So again, this guy's getting a strip. That's what his owner loves. She likes to keep him clean and, and just simple. He's got an extremely thick coat. Um, and uh, we're gonna get started and get going on that. So just before I start though, I have bathed and dried this dog beforehand, even though he's getting shaved. I always bath and dry my dogs first because you're never gonna get the same finish if you don't. And that's why we're gonna be able to get this dog so smooth. You'll see how smooth we're gonna be able to clip this dog. And that is purely because we've prepped him by bathing and drying him before clipping him. So I have not pre-shaved this dog. We are just going to be uh, taking him straight from bathe to dry. Like I said, he doesn't handle the four star, so we stand dried him. And uh, he's very, very good for everything else, but he just happens like lots of cocker spiders not to like dryer, so. Um, well, we're gonna get started here. So again, speed grooming, my tips and tricks for your short kennel cuts on how to get these guys more efficient so you guys can make more money and without uh, sacrificing quality or comfort for you and the dog. Okay, flipping you over here. So I've done half of him. And now we're gonna do the other half. Whoop. His name is Gus. I'm here, little Gus. She's not so well. Okay, so we have the other half of Gus here. Let me flip here. Gus is very young, he's about a year old. So I'm gonna have a nine on my five and one clippers. Now, if you guys wanna look up a seven blade and a nine blade, they're about one and a half millimeters difference. But just by switching to nine blades instead <laughs> of seven blades, you're going to save yourself minimum 10 minutes to 15 minutes of groom. And I'm gonna show you why. So this is one of my number one tips to groomers if you want to save time and money. And if you work in a rural area like I do where there's a ton of owners that want strip downs, this is gonna save you a ton of time. Just let me readjust them under the light here. Okay, so again, check out that length on your seven blade versus your nine blade. You'll see it is only a couple millimeters difference, but the time savings is totally worth it. Okay, so I've got my nine on my five and one clippers. Again, we bath and dry him first. So that's what's gonna give me a perfect stroke every single time. So I want you guys to see how perfect his hair comes off. And this is a very thick Cocker Spaniel. You can't even see skin even on a nine. So this guy, this is the perfect technique for this guy. But see how smooth that's coming off? No lines. That's because he's been bathed and dried properly. So this actually makes my groom faster. So I prefer to do that over pre-shaving. And that way I can make use of every stroke. So I'm clipping with the grain and I'm making sure I'm using nice, even pressure. And I'm making sure I'm using the full width of my clipper on every stroke. That way I'm getting the full benefits. Otherwise, I'm having to go over him a million times, which you don't want. Make sure you're keeping the angle of your clipper 
the same no matter how the contours of his body is changing. Okay? So every stroke needs to matter. So let me adjust him. I have a comment here, Dana. Would a 10 do the same? A 10 would absolutely do the same. In, in, I'm just showing a 9 just purely because so many groomers use 7s. So I'm just showing the benefits of using a 9 versus a 7 blade in your shops. You're also saving on a bunch of risks. I mean, we know that 7 blades are kind of a risky blade. They're the most common to nick dogs. So you also save yourself that. Plus you get to use your five and one clippers, it's a lot lighter. But a 10 would be great too, if your owners want a 10, go for it. I'm just gonna switch sides of the table, guys, so that using the light, so you can see them a bit better. Plus he wants to face that direction. <laughs> okay, so you can face the direction you want. He wants to face the door, so we're gonna let him face the door. Okay. Okay, so again, make sure every stroke matters. So whenever I teach advanced grooming to groomers that want to come in for advanced training, I almost always have to go back to their clippering skills. If you can get a dog to be 80% done with clippers, then the scissoring part is easy. And you also speed up your grooms so much. Also, having a properly clean, prepped coat is your best weapon to being able to groom quickly. We can see how smooth this guy is. I don't have to back brush. I don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to smooth this coat out. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna save a ton of time in scissoring. Now, we, what, sorry, go ahead. We have a comment asking, what is that brand of clipper? This is a wall Barretto, and it's actually from their barbering line of clippers. It's a wall five and one Barretto, and I'm using a nine blade. Again, um, in my salon and in salons I help get more efficient, we always switch from sevens to nines. It's a one or two millimeter difference, but the difference in time savings is huge. So back legs, I like to come in and think of my legs in three sections. I like to think of three sections, my big hip area, which I've cleared, then my second section, which is where the leg goes from the knee to the hock. So that's my next section. I'm gonna poke through my finger on that tendon area so that I can get that cleared out. Come down the front. And now once I've cleared, and I like to get the entire top of the hawk, this little ball area that's really difficult. Now my next step is I like to just squeeze the leg just a bit above the knee. And facing the dog this way allows me to get this area and his leg stays straight for me. So then I can go down get his entire foot with the leg straight and then I can come all the way around again I'm making sure every stroke matters and once you get good at this and you know the dog well then you know his body contours and I'm able to do this in a few strokes so that's how and I'm going to come on the inside as well so I'm able to get all that in one hold done and this is a heavy guy that loves to sit so that's a great hold for those ones coming and getting his rear end. I'm not leaving this area until I'm completely satisfied and done. Coming in and getting his tail. I did the other half already. He has a full tail and the owner still likes it shaved. So, you know. This one is a very practical owner. They go uh, camping all the time. So he's just kind of a, more of a companion dog than a looks dog. And some of us do work in these rural areas where this is where owners want. This guy, it's actually too bad. This guy has absolutely gorgeous, stunning hair, and he's a beautiful dog. I would love to do this guy in a great cat, but his mother doesn't like it. Okay. So we now, have another comment. Uh, Jennifer is asking, does this 5-in-1 clipper use an A5 detachable blade? No, not an A5 blade. It uses its own wall-designed 5-in-1 blades with an adjustable knob on the bottom. Okay, I have switched to a 10 for the groin. And what I'm doing is tucking the leg up. When you tuck the leg up, his hip joint opens. So it's a lot more comfortable for him. If you have the leg extended and you try to lift that hip joint, it locks. So you need to tuck it up. So think of like a little chicken wing and then you can open that hip joint. So a lot of groomers have these big heavy dogs like this 
and they're struggling with getting them to stand up for them. But the key is just making sure you crunch that leg up enough. Plus, when you crunch it up, it actually pops out this little groin area for you so you can get that all clipper. Now you'll notice that I'm gonna shave the inside of my opposite leg from this angle. I left it for you guys so that you could see. I'm gonna take this entire inside area out from this angle. Every angle, I'm gonna pull out the area in the tendon. And I clip that and I get it done really well from this angle. Clipping everything, I like to go reverse in front of the penis a little bit. And any areas, I just like to reverse just a little bit in the groin, very, very lightly. Just helps me grab all those little areas. I know it's dark, I suppose, with the black dog. Now I can get also the inside of this back leg from this angle, which I'm going to come in and do. I'm not leaving this area until I'm fully satisfied. That's the key to speed grooming. Do not move on until you're satisfied. So this, I have a very nice groom on this leg. It's almost perfect. I've got some work on the foot to do. So now I'm moving on. I'm going to hold this front leg forward. Again, the range of motion for their legs is forward and back. So forward, I'm going to be able to come over this armpit area and under the armpit area safely. And again, I'm making every stroke count. Every stroke needs to count. But that's where you have to perfect the perfect pressure, the perfect angle, and keeping that same pressure, same angle, no matter how the body's contour changes. Now I'm tucking the leg up again to open the shoulder joint. Same thing. If you try and extend the leg forward and then open his shoulder joint, you're going to get a lot of fight from them. So I like to tuck it up with a little chicken wing and then pull up. And then that actually unlocks his shoulder joint. If you extend it, you'll see it locks it. So you don't want that. That's when you're going to get them fighting. Now I get everything I can in that armpit, get it nice and clear. And from this angle is where I like to do my elbow. So I'm going to get that elbow as clear as I can. And now we're going to stand. And I'm okay if he wants to sit for his front legs. So I'm going to extend this leg forward. The front leg, same thing. I'm going to get the entire top third section done. Going all the way around. I'm going to zero it away for you guys. I'm just going to tuck his ear away. Can you just repeat what that clipper is for uh, this is, Diane? Sure, the, Diane, this is the wall Beretto, five in one. From this angle, I'm pulling forward, not out. Forward, and I'm coming in with my wall Beretto underneath. So notice where my body position is, and I'm coming crossways underneath. This is the easiest way for me, I find, to get this. And all I'm focusing on is this top third of the leg. Remember, I got my elbow and armpit already. Now what I've done is I'm going to bring my hand, so you might want to switch positions here. I'm going to bring my hand underneath and above the elbow. That's going to be my hold, above that elbow. What that does is keep his legs straight for me. Now I can work on the next third, which is just where it connects to the foot. I'm going to work my way all the way around again and making sure every stroke counts. Once you perfect getting the exact pressure and the exact angle all the time, this is really fast. I'm going all the way around, making sure it's perfect, and then I can switch to holding the foot to get the little inside strip. And now I can move my hold down where I just have the floppy end of the foot left. And now I'm gonna put my fingers underneath the foot to hold it stable. I see some groomers that will set it on their arm. I like to use my fingers to stabilize the foot underneath, and that way I can come over his foot with this 10. Sorry, we're on a nine. Again, we're using a nine instead of a seven because it's a couple, it's one and a half millimeter shorter and it's gonna save us so much time in scissoring. And I'll show you why in a minute. He's a little bit finicky for his feet, so I just let him have his foot back and then I just repeat. But this makes these finicky dogs much easier to do because you're only doing it in a section at a time. Cindy, she's on a nine. I'm on a nine blade on my five and one instead of a seven because it is faster, more efficient, and it's only a millimeter and a half difference. So it's my go-to, and it's the go-to to adding speed to your salons. Any of your seven grooms, if you switch them to nines, and these tips I'm showing you today, you're gonna save a ton of time. 
Okay, so our clipping is actually completely done on the body. I'm going to switch to a 40 blade on my number 9. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make that fast and efficient. I want you guys to notice that there's no sticky outies. So we have Tammy McGiffin asking, what is the correct angle to hold the blade? So the blade, you want it at your 9. It needs to be quite steep, not shallow. I see a lot of girls making that mistake. Holding it quite shallow to the body, you need to have a very steep angle. And the shorter you use it, so we're now on a 40, we need to be even steeper, which is what I'm going to do in the pop hats. So I've got my 40 here. I'm going to clear just the top of the foot. And while I'm here, I'm just lightly dusting the side of his foot. Because whatever you can do with clippers, where you're at, saves you time and makes you a more efficient groomer. Okay, so I'm coming in, I'm clearing my pads, and I'm making sure to do a very nice edge on the edge of my toe. And I'm coming right to the nails and doing a very nice edge. Notice them coming sideways around. I'm gonna do the same on this side. Sideways around, and I'm making sure I'm, I'm taking my time here. This is also a cocker spaniel foot, so we wanna get as much hair off of this thing as possible. Okay, that's my foot. Now I'm going to switch to my nine again, and then I'm going to brush up the top of my foot. You can see what's left here is barely anything. Brush it up. I'm going to re-clipper again that steep angle, really steep angle. If I go like this, I'm, I'm just going to dust off. It has to be steep. And I'm really wrapping around those toes. Now I'm going to switch back to my 40. And I'm just going to touch up around the nails. And this is going to leave me with just dusting to do with my scissors. So you can see how this is going to save you a ton of time. And, you, and this is a big, hairy cocker spaniel foot. And now it's completely tamed. Okay, so let's go get our other one. So we have Heather asking, how long does the total groom take you? This is a 20-minute groom for me from start to finish. The entire dog including its face. So now I'm going to come. I like this little additional toe pad on the back, uh, past an area. I like to come with my 40 blade. I'm just going to reverse up the back, and I'm just touching it up. Again, you're on a 40, so be gentle. I don't want a big naked patch. But I'm already here, and I'm going to save myself the scissoring by coming in and touching that all up. I'm also going to do around the dew claw. I like around my dew claws, really nice and clean. So I'm actually... Okay, he's very touchy for feet so heather's asking does that 20 minutes include your bath and dry no nope, that is just the groom with bath and blow dry for this guy <laughs> is one hour 15 minutes and he is a stand dry dog he doesn't tolerate the force dryer so i'm coming in i'm going a bit slower on this front foot because he's fairly finicky for his front feet He wants to lay down, so if he wants to lay down, for me, he's a very submissive kind of guy, so I'm going to let him lay down. He's just a bit shy, so if this is what's more comfortable for him, then we're going to go with it. Again, I'm wrapping around that foot with my 40 blade, all around, and wrap around this side as well, because the more perfect I get this foot, the less scissoring I'm going to have to do. And I want this to be a fast groom. It's okay, bud. It's okay. Good boy. I'm going to take my time to do it perfect because he's not going to be any better for scissoring, so it's actually easier to do it with clippers. But see how clean? We're right clean under each nail, and all I have to do is touch up the top of the, those nails now. But see how clean we are on the sides of the foot? This is what it needs to look like. My dew claw area is clean all around that additional toe pad. Everything's done, so I don't have to come back and scissor this area. Now I'm going to brush up. Now we've got all the, all we've got left is the stuff between the toes. So I'm coming back with my ten, with my nine again, and I'm going to come over again. That steep angle is necessary. Wrap around those nails, and you can see what we're left with. The foot is very nice, very cleaned up. We have very little to do, so I'm going to come with my forty blade and just touch up lightly around the nails. This is going to leave me virtually nothing to scissor. All I have to do is two seconds of scissoring. See how cute his foot's looking? So you can see how this can become a very, very quick groom. So I'm just going to finish this head off here. We've got a 10, 
I'm going to do a slight bit of a crest on him. So I'm right from the top of the ear where it connects at the front to the front. I'm leaving a little circle of hair there. I'm coming down. Again, I'm making every stroke count, but you can see because he's already been bathed and dried, not pre-shaved, we're getting a beautiful smooth cut. And again, using a nine instead of a seven, we're saving ourselves a ton of scissoring on little sticky outies. So you can come back if you do have any sticky outies and touch them up with a 10 blade. Just barely dusting in any areas, and then that'll touch up. This adds so much time and saves you so much time. Okay, I'm going to clip his ear, I'm going to stabilize under the ear with my hands. I'm always clipping from the center out, clipping right out. And again, I'm making sure steep angle. If you're too flat, you're not going to get a perfect cut. And I don't like to repeat my strokes if I can help it. Again, that's a time saving thing. Once you get that perfect angle versus every plane of the dog's body and the right pressure, and he's clean and prepped properly, then that's when you can get perfect strokes every time. Okay? And you can see how clean this guy is. And this is a very hairy guy. I mean, this is a nine and he's thick. So this guy has a ton of coat. I'm now coming on a 40 on the inside of his ear. Again, I'm stabilizing it with my hand on the back. So I have something to push against. And I'm cleaning up the entire inside of his ear. This Hillary is asking, do you bathe him after the groom again? No, we do not bathe again. He's already bathed and all the way dry. If you have owners that are concerned about uh, little hair slivers everywhere, you can blow them off or something like that. Here we don't really have that issue, but I do know groomers that uh, over this area that's so dangerous, I go very, very light with the ear fully open and very light. And then I come harder up the top, okay? And then I like to come over the edges, just with my 40 over top my fingers. Now I'm not going this way against the edge, I'm just coming over the edge like this. If you go along your edge like that, you're likely to cut it. So, but if you go flat, Okay, but just flat, I'm able to edge it all along. Again, this is gonna leave me virtually no scissoring to do. I'm just coming along, flat edge. See how we have almost no scissoring to do, so I'll touch that with shears after. I'm now switching back. I'm gonna switch to a 15 now. And come towards myself, right at the eyes. You're okay. And again, every stroke needs to count nice and smooth. On faces, go slow. That's how you're gonna get a nice smooth face. And we all know how thick these Cocker Spaniel faces are. And then I like to go with the grain from the eye back. So I'm setting my edge so that it doesn't go in his eye. So it's just on the edge of his eye. And then I go back. Right at the edge of the mouth, I'm going back. And since I've already shaved in here with the 40, I can clean it right up to that ear. Again, no scissoring in there now. Coming down his neck. And I like all my dogs laying down for their faces, so he can just set his face on my hand like he's doing. He's been groomed by me since he was a little guy, so he's used to it. And then I'm just gonna stretch out that mouth just a little bit with my thumb, just so I can get the inside here. And then I'm going to get my entire chin area. Now I'm going to switch to a 30 and just to touch up his lip area. I like their lips very nice and clean. It just gives them a very soft look. Just gently touching up his lip area. Okay. He's got this adorable little face. And now, if you do a traditional cocker, uh, they do get above the eye a little strip shaved as well. So I just encourage him by touching there to close his eye, and then I just lightly go over that area. Oh! And then we have that little strip over, and we're going to use that for clipping this crest in here in a moment. Okay? So I'm going to show you what's left to scissor on him once we're at this point. Come on, buddy. Please. <laughs> so 
you'll see our feet are extremely clean. So all I'm going to do is come in with my curved shear. I'm going to brush this foot up again. You'll see we have almost nothing, just a little bit. I'm just going to come in and clipper that. And if you wanted to, you could even come and clip between the toes like a clean foot if you wanted to. Let's see how quick that was. I've already done my edges all around my nails with my 40 blade. So it's done. Beautiful foot. Okay, I'm going to go back to my friend. Um, with my 9, I can switch to a 10 blade on here. And I'm just going to lightly do any of my edges. Come in. Edge everything lightly. And that's going to clean up everything. Okay. Same thing on the front leg. I'm just going to edge. I've already done all around this area with my 40. Touched it up. So that part's done as well. I did my armpit in a 10. So that's done as well. What's left is just my front paw here. So I'm going to lift it up. Brush up. You can see a little bit here that needs to be done. Come in and scissor. So Tammy has a comment. I've only ever used one clipper. Is there really a difference with them, good versus bad, or is it mainly technique? The five in one will be a life changer for you if you've only been using A5 clippers. It's lighter, it's faster, it doesn't heat up, the blade is sharp, the lengths are all interchangeable right in here. It is a total game changer in my opinion. So, and it's what we use 90% of the time for our grooms. So you're able to do so much versatility with these versus an A A5 clipper. Plus the dogs tolerate them better. They're not with much vibration, they're quieter. It's just a win, win, win for me. So that's why I switched to these. Plus, like I said, using a nine blade instead of a seven, which is what we did here, you're saving that one and a half millimeters, but it saves you all the sticky outy scissoring. So again, this is a 20 minute from start to finish groom, including scissoring his crest, and his feet and nails and everything. So with the bath and dry, an hour and 15. If I was able to force dry him, it could be probably uh, around a one hour room, I would say. So knowing your times is vital so that you know what you're doing. Let me just grab a quick Tammy is also asking, where did you find that clipper on Amazon? You can't get it on Amazon. You'll have to go through a wall supplier. Um, they have lots, it's the same uh, inside, it's the same as the Bravura. And all my guys lay down for, for their heads, which I'm fine with. Diane is asking, how do you keep the five-in-one blade sharp? By always using it on clean prepped coat. So remember, your clean prepped coat is your absolute game changer as well. It's number one. I did not pre-shave this dog. The reason I can do this and get such a clean finish without back brushing, without having to clip him a million times, is because we bathed and dried him first. Now I'm going to come in and just dust in this whole, whole crest. Again, I have shaved this little section over the eye. That's going to help you set your crests in. And now what I've done is the crest starts, sorry, ends just at where the front of the ear connects and then goes from the corner of the eye. That's the circle I do. So that way I'm just coming in. Uh, these are my curved chunkers from Andy Patricia and Mike Kitney. I'll take them in the post so you guys can go check them out. But I just love these curved chunkers. It just helps. What you want to do is make sure you get that nice blend. But again, because he's been clean and blow dried properly, this is so easy. And the point of the crest on most pet dogs is just to fill in that large divot in their skull. Okay, we just want a nice round little head. We come this way. Just blending it in. So I'm leveling it with the top of his skull. Okay, and what I've got left is this kind of little mohawk down the front. I'm just going to come in, scissors straight up, so I get rid of the mohawk, and then what I've got is just to round it nicely over the eyes. Now again, this is easy to scissor over the eye because we've already shaved this part, so you don't have to come right close to the eye. You're a good centimeter above already from clipping that part, which is traditional to the breed anyways. And notice I'm scissoring with my comb side moving up. You want to be combing through the hair. 
Now if I have a little ridge, then I need to come back and scissor a bit more. Connie, she's going to post a link where you can look up the scissors. I will post a link. Angie and Mike are both admins in the group. And they this is their design, the Sassy Dog line. I don't know if you guys can see that. Sassy Dog line. These are their 35 tooth uh, thinners. <coughs> curved. I know they're getting some in pretty soon here. So. so then the only last thing I have to do is his nails and double check his ears. So I just like to come and just edge those ears lightly. Again, I've got barely any to do because I've touched them all up with my 40 blade. Come back to the other side. I didn't touch up this side yet. And that is how we finish. A giant cocker spaniel uh, shave in 20 minutes without sacrificing your quality and adding efficiency to your time without having to spend a bunch of money on equipment. Nice and simple. You can see he's clean. His groin looks great. His paws look perfect. So this is a very clean, crisp groom. And we saved it. I hope that was helpful to you guys. I'm Dana Alexander from Prestige Dog Grooming School in the Everyday Pet Grimmer. And this was Gus. And love seeing you guys today. Talk soon.